review of classic Christmas stories and poems by various authors. A Visit from St. Nicholas, Clement Clark Moore, 1823. Hi, I'm Crazy Chrissy, and today I'm going to be reviewing classic short stories and uh, fairy tales at Christmas time. So I figure I'd do this as a, as a way to reignite, I guess, classic stories and my views on them. Um, these are just my views. Read them yourselves. Make up your own opinions. But um, I had a few rules. I'll post the rules at the end of the video. I might even state a couple of the rules during the video. Um, but I had to make them free on e-readers. This is my Kobo. I love me Kobo. And um, the first one I'm going to read review was the Twas the Night Before Christmas or A Visit from Santa Claus by Clement Clark Moore. I've read this years and years ago. Obviously, everyone's read this. But this time I read it and really read it. And I enjoyed it. But I don't know. I felt when when he mentions the name of the reindeer, he should have did it later or at the end. Because I'm like, wait a minute. Is that right? And I, after I read it, I Googled it. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, the version I have is the right version. But I don't know. I've, I just feel he should have mentioned it at the end. I don't know. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But um, better than that, I loved it, you know. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was the night before Christmas and or a visit from St. Nicholas. And it's good. I really liked it. Um, but... A child seven or eight would really enjoy it because some words a littler kid wouldn't understand. Sorry, my cat just sneezed. <laughs> and uh, a littler kid wouldn't understand, but a child seven or eight or older might understand it or at least be able to ask. My cat's trying to get my attention. Um, sorry, would at least try and understand the words. And it was very good. I very much liked it. Only because I'm a Christmas Eve baby. But <laughs> that's a story for another time. That's not a classic. <laughs> and um, yeah. It was good. I liked it. Although the reindeer should be mentioned later. At the end. So, thanks. Gift of the Magi, written by O. Henry. 1905. Hi, it's Crazy Chrissy, and I'm going to review The Gift of the Magi. This is part two of a three-part video. Um, it's all going to be a one video. It's not going to be very long. Gift of the Magi was written by O. Henry, not the candy bar, the writer. And I was first introduced to this story when I was um, in high school. In grade 9 in drama class, we had to do a little mini Christmas play during class. And it was about Gift of the Magi. And I absolutely loved the premise of the story. But I never actually read the story until about 2 a.m. this morning. <laughs> it's still early morning. It's like 4 o'clock. <laughs> but I couldn't sleep, so I got dressed. I'm like, hey, I'll do a YouTube. But that's another story for another time. But... Gift of the Magi is really good. I really liked it. And the female in the story was a bit whiny. Sorry, I found. I didn't like her that much. But, and in one part of the story, there might be a couple spoilers, sorry. But, um, one part of the story is talking about the gentleman in the story, the male, and how he owns a hair. That wouldn't fly by today's standards <laughs> by any woman um, that I know of. But, but other than that, it was a good story, and it was a very beautiful story. 
the premise of the story is beautiful is what I should say. And I found that um, it just it, it displays true love very well in a very compact way. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I think a young adult, like even a even a teenager would enjoy this story, but they'd really have to be into classics to really enjoy it. Um, but a child wouldn't enjoy this story. But I actually have a great Gift of the Magi story of my own. Um, it's inspired by the premise of Gift of the Magi. My daughter was, I'm, I'm rambling now, but forgive me, uh, but my daughter was in grade school. She was in grade seven, I believe, and she needed hair for an assignment, for a science experiment. Uh, she wanted to see how she could get dye out of hair naturally, and she really wanted to do it, but she didn't want to go to a hairdresser to get dye from, not dye, but hair from an unknown person. She found that gross and you know, that's kind of weird too. And she's like, Mom, I need hair. I need hair. And she wasn't about to cut her own hair and I wasn't about to let her because her hair is like down to here and it is gorgeous and she loves her hair. Um, but I, uh, I went to the bathroom and I called my daughter to the door I have the door shut and I, I quickly explained the story of Gift of the Magi. She didn't quite understand, but she actually managed to push me out of the way. And my hair, which was down to here at the time, was now up to here. <laughs> I chopped it <laughs> for my daughter's science experiment. I do it all over again, if you're wondering. But that's my Gift of the Magi variation of the story that really did happen. So... But I recommend this book to a teenager that's into classics or an adult. Um, and it, it's very compact. It's a very short story. So it has to get its point across quickly. And other than that, I found it was very good. And it definitely conveys as much emotion as it can. Maybe that's what the author was trying to do with the female character, the female lead. Well, she's the only female. But, well, no. There's the hairdresser lady. Um, the wig lady. Um, but I found it was very good. But it has its flaws. But, um, but it's a great story. And it definitely makes you wonder how what you would do for love to express your love at Christmas time or any time of the year for that matter. So thanks. The Velveteen Rabbit Marjorie Williams 1922. Hi this is part three of this of this video and um, now I'm going to be doing The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. I found the real rabbits that the Velveteen Rabbits meet are jerks. <laughs> Sorry. If you love the story, I apologize. But that's my opinion. And when the boy, the spoilers in this one, sorry. When the boy gets scarlet fever, the rabbit's more upset about not being outside than his boy being sick. Let that sink in. <laughs> that, that Velveteen Rabbit's a bit of an ass. Forgive the language, but it really is. <laughs> and then, and then a, he finally becomes real by this fairy. And a year passes and then he goes to see the boy. to me forget my nails but at least not to me and I I didn't like the story as much as I thought I would 
I really didn't. Um, and the rabbits made a sawdust, and I found that very interesting. And um, sawdust and velveteen, which I find interesting because velveteen is actually not. It's a nicer material. It's not expressively nice, but it's nicer material, but filled with the sawdust. That's a little weird to me. And then the skin horse. I almost broke one of my rules of, well, one of my guidelines of reading my classics. I caught myself getting, picking up my cell, because I'm reading it on my Kobo, but picking up my cell phone, which I'm recording with right now, but picking up my cell phone, getting ready to type in Skin Horse to look it up. I, no, I can't do it until after I read the book. So I read the book, didn't love the book, kind of liked it, but I found the rabbit, the real rabbits to be jerks and the real, and the velveteen rabbit to be a bit of an ass, not worrying about the boy who is sick and is clinging to life. And then, it just, yeah, it, mm, I didn't like it. If you love this story, please tell me why. I don't get it. And if I offend you, I apologize. I do. But I don't like this book. Palpatine Rabbit, not loving it. Um, who would I recommend it for? No. <laughs> the word nobody's like flashing in my head. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this to my kids. <laughs> and my kids are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're teenagers. So, but would I recommend it to a younger child? No, they wouldn't know what scarlet fever is. You'd have to explain that to them, and it just, uh, yeah, I didn't like it. Just, mm. I'm not telling you what skin horses. I want you to read the book, make up your own decision, and figure out what a skin horse is. If you have to, Google it after you read the book. Thank you.